Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intel, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. Thank you for being with us. This segment is brought to you by CommercialAgentSuccess.com. Power your sales meeting with 21 one-hour videos that you access via the cloud. Check it out at CommercialAgentSuccess.com. Well, healthcare, retail, hotels, all a big part of the commercial real estate world. And these segments are really full of opportunities and they're really changing quite quickly. You know, with work from home, you know, migration, uh, consumer trends like changing so fast. How do you know if a property will work well uh, for a certain practice, a medical practice or a certain retailer kind of beyond the, the old school methods? How can we take it a little further? Well, now we can add mobile analytics and predictive analytics to really better understand consumers and locations. Look, you're going to love this if you have anything to do with development, asset management, property management, site selection, tenant representation, project leasing, and really investment decisions. One of the things that I really like about what you're about to hear. Please welcome my guest. It's Bill Stenniford. He's here in Studio One with us. He's Senior VP with Bucks and Bill. Thank you for joining us, sir. Pleasure to be here. Well, let's let's talk about this. Uh, you know, we're all familiar with a retail gap analysis that you know we've used for, for years, kind of understand wh what's a need in the, kind of the retail world. But with now with predictive analytics and mobile analytics, we can really take that a little further, right? And then one of the things that I love that 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 you now can help us all do is really understand the need for medical practices, right? What will work well in a certain area? Tell, tell us, you know, how does this work? How, how can you do this? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it starts with data yeah. and, and technology, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, uh, Buxton has been around for almost 30 years doing these kinds of analyses for thousands of different companies, right? From, you know, really large health systems to grow to retailers to big hospital or uh, hotel chains, et cetera. And so to do, to be building these predictive analytics to help them understand their performance, like what would they do if they went into a particular uh, intersection or building or location and why, right? And so we've sort of conditioned those companies over the years to understand what's important based on data and analytics. And when combined with great local market expertise, that gives them, you know, supreme confidence in making major investments. So, you know, when you talk about a, uh, a gap analysis, you know, the easy part is to say, well, who's not here? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's not that hard. And uh, the the bigger trick, the better question, the more valuable question to I think your audience is who's not here that should be here? Because frankly, I don't care about anybody that isn't there. They're not there for a reason. Right. Who's not here that should be here? Right. Let's go figure that out. And then let's go be able to take that story to them with data and, and analytics in a really uh, you know, powerful way to tell that story, uh, to then say, hey, this is a great spot for you and here's why, to really allow you to have a competitive edge to bring those people in versus, you know, somebody that's talking to them with some of the old school kind of things that are out there. Yeah, and you know, I'm a commercial real estate broker, work in the Southeast and, and I have local brokers at our shop who, who lease retail and medical space in, in Metro Atlanta. And one of the things that we come up against here is that hey, we, we feel as brokers knowing our market that this uh, medical service would do well here or this retailer would do well, but we really can benefit from really a third party validation of that, right? That's right, that's right. And, and it's important to understand too that uh, just like real estate, the profession of real estate is, is evolving, mm -hmm. so is healthcare as it relates to uh, real estate. All right, so think about what's going on in healthcare right now. You've got uh, an evolving consumer, right? And, and it used to be, hey, uh, I'm gonna go put my location right by the hospital, like a barnacle on a boat, right? I'm gonna put my location right by the hospital, and if I'm a specialty medical provider, I'm gonna try to work primary care referrals into my building, and I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter that I'm far away from all the people, right? That's kind of how they would make those decisions. but. Now a consumer can take out their smartphone and say, 
you know, even for things like orthopedics uh, or oncology, you know, there's a lot of different service lines, dermatology, that you're not just going to necessarily trust your referring provider, right? So I, there, there's a lot of these healthcare companies that are going directly to the consumer to try to market to them. And so that creates an opportunity. So you've got this evolving consumer that knows they have choice and they can go find where these other options are, right? So you've got that going on. And then you've got an extremely competitive landscape. In any market, not only do you have health systems competing against each other, but you also have tons of businesses that are backed by private equity and all kinds of specialty and retail health that are really being competitive. And that's because there's so much money being spent in healthcare uh, and it's inefficient. And anytime you have inefficiency and you have lots of dollars being spent in an area, then a lot of people want to play into that space. And the ones that play into that space, uh, you know, whenever you have that many people in a space, you're going to have winners and losers. And I believe the ones that are going to win are the ones that can take these new ways of, of understanding the healthcare world and understanding data to help find great sites. Those are the ones that are going to win. So where can I take these, these, these clients in an outpatient setting that's going to be around a high concentration of their likely potential patients where I can understand what the current claims based demand is. I can understand the pair mix. I can, I can use predictive analytics and mobile analytics to help understand and validate what you may know in your gut. Because the last thing I'd say on that is, you may say, I know this is great for orthopedics. And you go try to take that to an orthopedic specialist. They're gonna say, well, why? Yeah. And now you have the ability to show them that data because the last thing that's happening because of the evolution in healthcare, it's not going to be, and in a lot of systems and a lot of healthcare companies, it's already changing where uh, it's not just, oh, I have a relationship with this real estate professional in the market and that's how we're gonna do our sites. You're, they're bringing in people from retail they're bringing in people from hospitality to run uh, and be part of strategy departments. Finance is obviously significantly involved in starting to question, well, why are we going there? Is it just because you play golf with that person and they have a great relationship? Why sh I'm not that that's not important, but why should we be there? And so you need to have this kind of analytics that we're talking about to be able to, along with that local market expertise, make that very convincing case. And it's really easy to do now with, with technology. You just have to have to want to use it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and it's easier to use, and it's really, frankly, less expensive than it was, you know, and before, right? Yeah. Um, and and easier to use. So so if I have a, a site or I have a retail center, and I believe, hey, it should be good for some medical uses. So tell me how I might do that. Going into to which system at, at Buxton would would I do that in, and how might that look for me to do? And, and then once I figure out who might do well here, who should be here, right? Right. How do I, and how, what would that look like when I show it to the prospective tenants? Yeah, so, you know, it's important to understand, you know, if I'll answer that question just a bit a second before. It's important to understand, too, that when we think about healthcare real estate, uh, there's a lot of times that traditional thought of, well, we're talking about an MOB, right? We're talking about a medical office building with this. And yes, that is still obviously true. But even specialty healthcare is more and more looking to be in retail centers, traditional retail centers, because again, the evolving consumer, sometimes the best marketing vehicle that any of these people can have is good real estate, mm -hmm. right? Visible signage. And I'm, I'm not, it's not like I got to go to the grocery store and get eggs and milk this week if I have knee pain. But when I'm going to get eggs and milk and I do have knee pain and I see that there's an orthopedic specialist at the end cap here that looks really nice and it has a that impression frequency starts to take hold. So this can be not just medical office building, traditional medical real estate, but also into, into retail. But in our, you know, Buxton has a commercial real estate technology platform that has, that provides our users access to all of this information where they can very simply push buttons. You don't have to know code or anything like that to push buttons and say, you know, out, you know for, you know, many different service lines, who should, who should be here and why? Yeah. With a click of a button to be able to then take those reports and that visualization, there's also tremendous visualization. You can, mm -hmm. you can demonstrate where these potential patients are for that particular service line. You can demonstrate what the payer mix is. You can look at where's the demand, right? What's the, what's the existing claims-based activity? You can, mm -hmm. you can do all of that uh, with the push of a button. And then you can also say here, you know, with mobile data, mm -hmm. here's why my building is better than any other building that you may be considering. 
both not just from a volume perspective, but also who's coming in there. Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of talk about mobile data and mobile data is great, but mobile data is is only important if you can connect it to a number of other data sets as well, right? Because if somebody says, uh, well, I have a lot of volume at this particular location, well, that's great. Who is it? Because again, if it's not matching what I'm trying to get, right. then it doesn't matter. That It doesn't matter how many people are there. It only matters how many people are there that are important to me, whoever yeah. you're trying to recruit. Well, if you can connect the mobile data with all of the big brother data that, that we have access to and, you know, household level data sets and how people live their lives and spend their money and, and, and really be able to know what to do with all of that. And we have these uh, pre-built modules that are already set up to mm -hmm. just be able to track that back and, and then answer those questions. This is fantastic stuff. And this is why I really wanted to get you on this show and, and share what you guys do uh, with my audiences. As you think about that, because most of us, if we own a building, uh, asset management, we're leasing it, um, then we kind of know who our competitors are. We know what other buildings, right, that the tenants may be looking at, the tenant rest may be showing them. But now we can kind of go in and, and look at those peer properties and, and do some comparisons and where it makes sense, uh, help sell the tenant, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. And, you know, in, 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 so it's important to understand in healthcare that, you know, inpatient decisions. So where do I build a hospital? Where do I build a big campus? I mean, that really is, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. But outpatient, which is where it's all going, ambulatory outpatient type services, mm -hmm. right? That really becomes more retail-like. And it really is the difference between success or failure in an outpatient setting for even retail health or specialty health uh, can, could be the difference between two locations that are a half a mile apart. One's going to be a home run, one you're going to be you're going to be out of money, right? You're going to, you're going to lose money on that investment if you're, the, if you're that healthcare tenant. And, the, and it's because how close can I get to the potential patients? Uh, what about co-tenancy? What about area draw? Uh, where are my competitors in relation to me? Where are my competitors in relation to me in relation to uh, the potential patients? And so, you know, in these two locations that I talked about, if all the potential patients are over here and you're here and your competitor's over here in an outpatient setting, now, there's other things involved in the decision, right? Yeah. But that's a significant strategic advantage for this site over this site. Yeah. If the reverse were true, you're over here, the competitor's here, and over here. That's, that's wildly different. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, 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 is, it is the point here, though, is there's a lot of complex um, horsepower and data that's out there, but that is at the push of a button yeah. to be able to, to get those answers and then share yeah. those answers. Yeah, I was talking to him a company that does a bunch of um, big company analytics to help them pick sites. And I asked them uh, if they knew about this and used it. And they're like, oh, no, oh, we don't. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to send you a link. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, and this also has a lot of interest to me from, from a lender perspective, from an investor uh, perspective, from a developer perspective to kind of look at these analytics and see, you know, should they be doing what they're thinking about doing, right? And one of those uh, uh, examples that, uh, that comes to mind for me is, uh, I think single tenant net lease properties are a good example where maybe you've got a tenant with a 15 year lease credit tenant, you're, you're good to go, maybe you don't need any analytics, but you get down to six years on a lease, you get down to four years or two years on a lease, now, well, you really need to know how well that tenant's really doing. And most of these tenants do not have to report sales. And so if you're a lender, a seller, a buyer, a broker, you're trying to, or an appraiser, you're trying to analyze that, this would be a great way, right, to come in and analyze, well, what is their traffic? Who is their traffic? And then compare it to stores where they, you know, are doing well or they have renewed, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we have REITs that utilize us for that very thing, mm -hmm. right? So somebody's coming up for renewal. How good of a fit is this particular tenant, be it retail, be it healthcare, be it, be it restaurant, whatever. Uh, how good is this? It's called, you know, how, how well does this particular tenant match to the trade area? Yeah, they're not sharing sales, yeah. but if I know they're a great match and I can compare their volume at this location to volumes of their other locations in that market. And I can see that, hey, 
You know, it's one of the higher traffic locations that you have. And by the way, when I look at the the lifestyle characteristics and the and the demographics of the people that live and work in this area, I look at the competitive pressures. This should be a great site for you. Yeah. That you could get that as an investor, you can get the answer on that right away. Right. And then you know, okay, do I play hardball with this person? Yeah. Or are they a bad match? And then if they're a bad match, maybe I'm saying, okay, do I give them concessions if they ask? But I'm already, I'm being proactive, right? I already know that going in. So then I can say, well, if they're not a good match anymore, who is a good match? And why give them concessions? Maybe have a move on. Exactly. And, right. I, and I can line up, I can, you can hit a button and in a second know, hey, these are the next best 10 and here's why. And now you're starting to go after and recruit them with really strong data, unbiased along with your local market expertise that says, you know, here's why you should be here. And so you don't ever miss a beat. You, yeah. you know, it's, it's very, you know, yeah. And then, and then I, you mentioned investment too. Even if you're going to do a ground up development, mm -hmm. what should be here? Right. You know, we've worked with city governments for almost 20 years, uh, helping them with retail recruitment. Uh, it's a lot of times they're associated with the developer, but it is, uh, you know, a lot of times in, in states that accept sales tax, Right? So they're trying to boost their sales tax revenue, but it is, hey, we're going to work with the developer to develop this piece of land. What retail, restaurant, hospitality, healthcare services should be here? Who specifically as tenants should be here and why? Yeah. And it's been tremendously successful in, in you know, one of the largest sales tax generators for city governments across the United States over yeah. the last 20 years. And a lot of people uh, play devil's advocate with you here. A lot of people are concerned that about their privacy on yeah. their cell phones and you know that we're being tracked at where we go and what we do and who we who we are not specifically individually who we are but kind of the, the makeup of us um, and but this so part of the mobile analytics mm -hmm. of this tell us about how that works it's not tracking that's Michael Bull that went in the store right, right? tell us what it's well, really doing so and by the way I have to say that we use our powers for good not evil <laughs> uh, but yeah so if you think about it um, so in some of our data sets that we, that we have, we have in-house data on 126 million households in the United States, up to eight individuals in the household. Know their ages, know their demographics, but also know how they live their lives, how they spend their money, how they behave as consumers, their attitudes, their lifestyles. That's pretty much every household in the United States, right? So we have all of that, right? Uh, and we use that all the time in our predictive analytics. With our mobile data, we get about two billion pings of mobile data a day that we can uh, that's updated as of, as of 48 hours ago. So in our platform, if you wanted to run an analysis uh, today, you would see everybody that was there Monday on back. And we track it back, you know, uh, for a significant period of time, over, over almost three years. And you think of the power of that. I mean, because consumer trends have been changing, right? You got this work from home, sure. people going, maybe they're spending more time in the suburbs, and now people are kind of moving in. So I love how current it is. Very current, and yeah. to, even so, even to show you volumes over the last year period. So, people, you know, you're right that you know here we are in Georgia having this conversation. We're based in Texas, but we both operate all over the country, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody is in California and they're thinking about, oh well, gosh, everything uh, has been shut down. Well, n no, I mean in Texas and in Georgia and in Florida, it's been open. So to be able to demonstrate that to a tenant. To say, look, yeah, I took a hit when we were all shut down in, you know, middle of March to the beginning of May in 2020. But we've been back, and look, it's, it took a while, but now we're seeing in our mobile data, we're seeing that uh, traffic in a lot of areas in the South is back above pre-pandemic levels, yeah. right? And so, but 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 to get to your question, I can take those two billion pings of data a day, and again, I'm archiving that for essentially three years, and that'll continue to build, and I can look at that particular your location your center, whatever it is. And I can say, okay, where were all my, where are all the cell phone pings that we capture within that location? Where were they before they went to the location? Where did they go after? And then where does that phone sit idle at night? Make the logical assumption that's their home. We append a latitude and longitude to that. We tie that latitude and longitude to an address, tie the address into household level data set. So now we can start to see demographically and psychographically, who are these people? Now we aggregate all of that data. I don't, because what I, no one, I don't care, I don't, first off, I don't want to violate any privacy, and we don't, but I don't care that Michael Bull was in this location. I care that, hey, there's a bunch of people that look like this, that are you and a number of other people that were in that center, and does that fit who you typically, as a tenant, try to attract? Right. Because if it is, I cannot just demonstrate, oh, I had five million visits in my, in my center over the last year. 
Well, who cares? Who are those visitors? Right. right? And how do I understand that? So we were able to tell you that with the click of a button in, in you know, less than a minute, you'd be able to tell yourself that, right? Yeah. And then you can say, oh, by the way, I know because I've, geo, you know, I've analyzed with mobile data through my match product your 10 closest locations or your 50 closest locations. Here's what that customer profile looks like. And how it compares. Actually, actually yeah. profiling who are in your, you know, if it's Trader Joe's or you know, whomever, these are your 10 closest Trader Joe's. And, and through this data, I've been able to build a customer profile demographically, psychographically, lifestyles of who are in these locations. And look, fits perfectly to who's already in my location. And I have great volumes. And look at the trade area dynamics and look at the competition. And, and, and it becomes you know, really interesting to obviously a potential tenant to get their attention. It's not a guarantee you're going to make that deal, but it puts yeah. you way ahead of everybody else who's trying to, hey, you need to be in my site. Well, what do you know about what, do you know about what I typically go to? It's, yeah. well, your demographics in a one, three, five, and it's like, mm -hmm. click, because that's not what they're looking at. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love it. Uh, I've even seen clients that are buying uh, multi-tenant retail and, and especially single tenant properties that well, when the tenants did not have to report sales, would actually send an, someone over to sit and watch and count the number of people going in and out of the store and then physically <laughs> sending someone to count at another store. Well, and they're only doing it for one, one day or a certain number of hours. This is just incredible information for folks that want to know things. Like and and think about the time savings. Yeah. Right? You guys yeah. are all very busy. The, yeah. the, the time savings is significant. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, oh, I just sit in the parking lot and I, and I count cars and I look at the cars. Mm -hmm. Look, the idea behind that is great, yeah. but that's very time consuming, right? And, and, yeah. and are you right? Well, what if you could push a button and get that answer in less than a minute? Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to tell you what kind of car they drive that you can see. I can see what, they're, what are they watching on TV? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, do, are they active? Or are they not? Do they like yeah. to fish? Do they like to, you know, what are all of those things? Yeah. And then I can say, hey, once I know that profile, then I can always just hit another button and say, okay, where's everybody else that looks just like that? Mm -hmm. So if I were a tenant, if I'm representing a tenant, again, I can say, hey, look, these are your five best, you know, locations in this market. I've quickly analyzed them. With, with Buxton's platform. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I then turned on a button and I'm showing a map that shows you here's the highest concentrations of people that look just like who, have, who are your best customers in these five locations mm -hmm. uh, that you don't have a store right now. Right. Let's go start to look at these areas and yeah. let's not waste our time looking in these areas where there's not a lot of these types of people. Right, right, that's fantastic. What would be an example of uh, the way some of your clients have used uh, Buxton's products here that uh, that's maybe surprised you or impressed you what they've done with them Well, I mean, you know, we talked about city government and a lot of our uh, real estate clients just actually recruiting Retailers in with this kind of story or healthcare organizations in with this kind of story yeah. um, you know, it, it's it's uh, That's that's been impressive from a REIT perspective understanding who's at risk like we talked about I think some of the interesting trends even in this uh, uh, in this environment is to uh, use this data to understand and, and be able to say, uh, hey, you might be looking, like for instance, um, let's say you went out and recruited retailer X because with this data it said they're a great match and all that. And retailer X then says, and this happens all the time with our clients, retailer X then says, actually I'm looking at that area. There's like four centers here that I'm looking at. Okay, well now you can compare very quickly you may have already done it, right, if you're going to get that person on the phone. Mm -hmm. Very quickly compare and show, hey, my, my center has more volume than these three other locations. Yeah. So purely from a traffic standpoint, it doesn't. Well, let's say, your, let's say your location didn't have as much volume. Again, volume is great in a vacuum, but it doesn't matter the volume if you can't tell me who are the people that represent that volume, right. demographically, behaviorally, et cetera. So you could say, hey, look, I may be second place as far as volume. Mm -hmm. But this is your customer profile based on the locations that you've opened in this market. Yeah. Look at who's coming into my center. And even though that guy's only across the street, look at the profile of the shoppers that are in that center. It's younger. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's whatever. Uh, it doesn't fit. You may be, uh, you may be going for uh, maybe they're a more senior-focused um, Retailer or whatever it is or healthcare organization, right? Well, don't go over there with a bunch of young people in bars and not enough park 
the people that are already coming into my center are the types of people that you want. So analytically, yes, this site works, but my site is better than the one across the street, even though they have more volume. They have more volume of young singles that you don't sell to anyway, so who yeah. cares? And they're taking up the parking spots of the people that you want to be here anyway. That's great. And last point on that is, yes, I'm gonna get you in a good site, but even without you spending a marketing dollar, I'm gonna help you ramp up quickly because those people are already in the center. Yes, I'm gonna send marketing to those people to try to drive them in and say, but, it's, but they're already in my center. They're gonna see my signage coming soon, this, this, right. this. You know, that helps you ramp up faster as well. And that to a retailer, to a restaurant, to a, to, um, to, you know, to a healthcare organization that's operating these types of things, that's, that's extremely valuable. And you mentioned uh, that you've got uh, a lot of REIT clients. And you know, one of the things that we're always doing as investors and principals and, and helping them is looking at a portfolio and deciding, hey, what do I keep? What do I renovate? What do I sell? And I guess you could look at trends and traffic uh, in properties kind of over time and kind of look, hey, is this really declining at a rate that maybe I should go ahead and get out now? Or, or, is, or, or the trends look really improving here? Maybe this is an asset I should hold? Yeah, I mean, and, and so that's another thing in, in the real estate platform, mm -hmm. the reports you can run uh, is just to understand how are the trade area dynamics changing over the last few years, right? And then what, what's happened even in the last month, two months, three months, with regard to looking at the mobile data. And again, connecting that to the lifestyle data, the demographic data of the households. Like, how do we see these trends? And uh, even if it's good today, what's it gonna be in five years? Yeah. Also maybe great information for a lender or appraiser, uh, you know, underwriting deals. Absolutely. Yeah. And you think about just laying, you know, even just layering in population growth, mm -hmm. but not at an overall level. Like it's just something it's like, oh, within three miles, here's the population growth. And it may be, it may be like, you know, I'm making up a number, maybe 3%. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's not very impressive. But, you know, we'll show it to you by block group mm -hmm. and in a visual nature as well as report so that you can tell some of the story to say, look, my center's here or my investment's here uh, and it's okay. This piece of the trade area is trending down a bit, but look at this, you know, it's overall it's 3%, but these block groups over here on the west side, mm -hmm. it's at like 30%. And it's negative population growth over here, which averages together to 3%, but I'm actually really well situated. Or maybe I need to move a little bit down the road to get right in the center of the bullseye of that growth. But, um, you know, those, those things are all at fingertips. And then again, I think it's also important too that, and I don't want this just to be a commercial on, on us, but, but uh, you know, in, in our platform, it, you can not only get these answers very quickly, but you can see them in a really visual way to then with your iPad in front of a potential tenant to be showing them all of this. Yeah. And we all know pictures and maps. We're all, most of us are very visual people. Yeah. Um, we have clients that are large franchise organizations, right? And when they're, they're using the same kind of stuff with their own customized analytics to go out and sell franchises, they're sitting in front of a franchisee and the same kind of thing that maybe the real estate professional is trying to say, hey, you need to get into this site over here. Well, the franchise is saying, I like this area, but look at all of our potentials right over here. Yeah. Don't go over here because it's two minutes from your house. Right. You might need to drive 10 minutes, but this is the better spot because I can show you all of these things in a visual way. And that's how real estate professionals can have access to that same information. What would you leave our audience with to think about regarding kind of the current market the changes going on and, and the type of information that's really available to us today? I would say that you know, I've been at Buxton for 16 years. The company is almost 30 years old. Um, you know, when I first started, uh, I would, as you start talking to people, trying to do business, right? Uh, they'd say, you know what, I, I don't need your services. I can, I just drive around in my truck and I, and I smell the dirt and I know that this is a good site. Mm -hmm. And you know what the thing was, uh, what was really fascinating to me was that a lot of those guys kind of did, they had, they had a gift, mm -hmm. right? They were always older, they were about to retire, Maybe they were the owner of the company. Maybe they were, but as a retailer, I know where I need to go. But the thing is, does the rest of your team, how do you scale that? You can't scale that, right? So, and then those guys all retired. And there's still some of those people out there, men and women out there that can do that. But, but it takes longer, like sitting in the parking lot, right? right. Counting cars and doing all that. Uh, and if you're trying to grow at scale, uh, you've got to 
adopt these types of predictive analytics, mobile analytics technology, right? So that's what's happened. In anybody that you're trying to recruit, retail, restaurant, healthcare, hospitality, financial, any, any service that you're trying to recruit, those organizations have evolved and they expect this kind of data. They have these models internally, right? right? So, so you, I would say to the real estate professional community, like you gotta, you gotta invest. And not just, it's not the money. Like I said, it's fairly, you gotta invest the time to wanna understand how to do it. I see that's the, the, been the biggest thing is like, it's, well, this is so easy, I'm so used to doing this. And I'm just telling you that that, that status quo, people are gonna pass you by. Yeah. That, that's what I would say, because again, like it's even in healthcare, like we talked about at the very beginning, like they're bringing in retail executives. They're bringing, bringing in like strategy department, chief strategy officer, chief development officer, it used to be completely outsourced essentially to the large broker brokerage firms or whatever. And now f f I'm telling you, talking to CFOs of our clients all the time, they're saying, why are we going there? Yeah. Because this guy told you that? Well, I bet he gets a big commission on that. <laughs> Is, does the data support that? That's going on all over the place. So you need to be able to say, yes, the data does support it. Yes, you need, my local market knowledge is very valuable and it tells you that, but it also, it's validated. It's like in baseball, the scouts and the statistics, money ball, you know, they all, they all agree. You gotta be able to tell that statistic, that data, that story, and, and, and we make it very easy. And to, to them and to all the people uh, that on their team, right? The lenders, their investors, Absolutely. their franchisee, you know, everybody involved. Um, Will you guys have a, a kind of a complimentary report that, that you could provide to our audience uh, for kind of get an idea of what you guys could do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We, we, so we're going to make that available where, okay. where you can go in and, and run our mobile data and answer some questions. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll make that as, as part of this program. So we're excited about making that, uh, get, getting you familiar with no, with no obligation. Awesome. So we'll give you guys the website um, so that you can go and get a complimentary uh, look at this. It's an incredible um, service and source that, you know, hey, as we evolve, the market changes, we need up to date, we need to know what's going on right now so we can predict the future and make good, good decisions. Bill, thank you for joining us. Great information. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. And thank you for joining us around the country. We appreciate it. Thanks for your comments, sharing the show, and connecting with us on your favorite social media. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show. America's Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Buxton. Take leasing site selection and due diligence to the next level. Make the right decisions with on-demand mobile data. Visit buxtonco.com. By Bull Realty. For proven commercial real estate asset and occupancy solutions, contact me. My email is michael at bullrealty.com. By Commercial Agent Success. Expert level commercial real estate broker training. Cloud Access One, up to 21 one-hour videos. Visit commercialagentsuccess.com. Thank you for reviewing, subscribing, and sharing America's commercial real estate show.